morning or good afternoon, everybody, depending on where you are. It's great to have you with us. We've got a super group that's uh, joining us today. So uh, I have a half an hour to take you through a great deal of information. So we're going to be like the movies are fast and furious today. So um, if you have questions, please type them into the uh, to the chat box and I will we have a Q&A at the end here. So um, Chris is going to help me watch those as well. We've got some links for you today. We've got some documents that we're going to be sending you uh, or that you can pick up here on uh, in the links and also we'll be sending them to you after. So um, let's jump right in again. I'm Dale Donovan B. I'm an ops coach. I've been with KW Commercial since 2010. I've been in the industry for over three decades. Um, I love this industry. It's an amazing uh, opportunity for us to, to uh, do what we need to do as entrepreneurs, but also have that corporate support that we have from, from KW Commercial. So um, we're going to give you a couple of tips and tricks and, and techniques today that, because I know we're going into 2024, and I hope everybody's got their goals, you know, priorities and strategies in the way, but are on the way. And um, my mantra is quality versus quantity. You're going to hear a lot of that today of what I mean by that. Uh, we have to really focus in 2024. We don't have time to waste. We don't have opportunities to waste. And we don't have uh, babysitting that we can do because we need to take care of business and move forward as quickly as possible. We've got a lot to do. So let's go to the first slide. Chris uh, Fabular is with me today. He is my uh, he is my admin. So next slide, please, Tris. I'm hoping we don't have some technical issues here. There we go. Quality versus quantity. Uh, less is more. Focusing on quality over quantity can be a, can be significant. It can make you unique. And the reason we're talking about this is various, various ways to do this. It's your quality of relationships, not how many clients you have, but what, how, you know, what is the quality of each of the clients and what are you going to be able to do with them? Are they going to be active? Are they going to be moving forward? Do they, are they qualified? Uh, the quality of information over quantity of data. What you provide to your clients is what we call value. And knowing what's going on in the market, knowing what's happening, uh, knowing what the interest rates are, knowing what you know uh, transactions are going for, what knowing what the uh, the market has in store is uh, absolutely vital for you to be able to provide that quality of information to your clients. The quality of properties. This is called not only do you qualify your clients and your prospects for buyers, tenants, and for listings but the properties that you have that are coming in, you need to make sure that they don't have a lot of hair on them that you have. I mean, naturally we're going to be problem solvers. And that is, you know, that's key of what we do. We're detectives and problem solvers, but we need to make sure that the quality of the, of the, the listing or the quality of the property is something that we can sell, that we can market, that we have the opportunity to be able to present this correctly in, uh, and to be able to sell or, or to lease it. Quality of service over quantity of transactions. We all know what this means. Customer service, client service, being supportive, having the knowledge that they need to be able, because we're their advisors. Um, we're the ones that need to be able to bring them the information that they're looking for. That's going to be able to help them make the decisions to either sell their property at the right price, to buy at the right price, to lease the right space and do those kinds of things. So the quality of service that we provide uh, is much is the key factor over the quantity of transactions. So I'd rather do 10 really quality deals and work with my clients very closely so that they come back or that I can have them in the future or that they'll give me referrals rather than a lot of transactions. And I think you're probably the same way. Quality of marketing over the quantity of advertising. Advertising is thrown against the wall, see what sticks. Quality of marketing is called target, target, target. That's where we are. Specifics being targeted to where you're going. Next slide, please, Tris. Doing more with less. Boy, that's one of the comments and the, the mantras that Gary Keller uses. We have that in the one thing. We have that throughout all of our 
you know, for sales trainings, everything. It's doing more with less, tr taking the opportunities that we have and doing the best that we have with them. And looking at quality isn't just something that you do per deal or per transaction. Once you start evaluating your deals and your prospects and your clients on the quality that they bring to the table and the quality you bring, but it becomes a focus, it becomes a habit. And it's something that you will instill into your deals, into your transactions. It will be a natural uh, way of thinking and you won't have to stop and think, well, is this the right deal or is this whatever? So um, listen to your gut instincts. They're gonna tell you what's right and what's going, going to be working for you. Next slide, please, Tris. Understanding your market. Oh, market knowledge, oh, this is it. Um, identifying your key commercial real estate markets. Everyone has those. I don't care whether it's a state, a region, a city, a municipality. We all have little top pockets of markets that are either industrial, office, retail. They're growing, they're redeveloping, all of those things. So identifying those markets. And I'm going to give you a couple of tips on that as well. Um, analyzing local and national trends. We have to be aware of what's going on nationally. It may not always be what's going on locally, but we can make that evaluation and see whether it's local or, or national. I mean, an example of that is, you know, industrial. We all know that industrial is like, you know, if everybody was like, one well, industrial, I want industrial, I want industrial. And whether the inventory was there or not, depending on your local market. Uh, current trends and market analysis, know what's going on. And again, I said, this is very localized. It can be from one, 10 miles away can be a different market than the one that you're in. So stay updated on your information, read your journals, your business journals, read your publications, those things that you're specializing in, make sure that you are getting those publications and that you're staying knowledgeable. I probably have 10 to 20 publications dropped on my desk every day. No, I don't read everyone. But I do look at the headlines and I do look and see what the things that are that are going to impact our business and commercial real estate. And I make sure that that I'm aware of those things. Um, impact of economic and tech, uh, tech changes. If you're not involved with the EDC, Economic Development Council, the Redevelopment Council, um, Economic Downtown Council, those kinds of the, the EDCs that are in your area, the local areas, regional areas, state areas, this, it, you're not going to get deals necessarily out of them, but you will get the most valuable information of what's going on economically and where the growth is in your area. If you go to your EDCs and you say, I am working with people and I want to help grow this area, show me what I can do, give me information, send me something electronically that I can put in my packages to sell and to promote this area to my clients and to my prospects. They will bend over backwards and help you. You need to talk to the, um, uh, the membership development or the business development, whoever is head of the business development or the membership development would be able to help you because they're the ones that do the marketing. And they have all kinds of materials that are electronic that they can send to you. You can put in your packages and you don't have to worry about plagiarism because you, you're showing their packages and you're showing that it's from the EDC. So it works beautifully to show what the growth is, it shows you're up to date, shows that you're connected and shows that you're doing things that are necessary to help your clients stay involved in the market and the community. Predictions for the 2024 market. None of us have a crystal ball, but there are a lot of things that are going on. Um, one of the things that, that are some of the things that are being sent to me and that I'm hearing and then I'm aware of um, industrial or um, retail and multifamily are still going to be some of the key factors. Probably retail is going to be the stalwart, stalwart for, um, for 2024. Uh, multifamily is, but the, the rents and uh, are not rising at this particular point. The cap rates are a little strange and finding product is also very difficult. So retail seems to be the one that's going to be rising, rising to the surface here. We all know what's going on with industrial. Uh, there's a lot of demand for it. They may not be the inventory. So you have to be aware of uh, and understanding your market. You know, yes, it's exciting to have you know, the opportunity. Everybody wants industrial, but if you don't have the inventory, you don't have a deal. So you need to be able to balance those things between what's hot, what's not, and what inventory is and what's not. Um, office, that is still up for, you know, up for anybody's guess at this particular point. Every different area, uh, every different city, region, state has some different things that are going on in the office market. So we need to, to be looking at that. Um, I mean, the medical health, uh, the healthcare and medical 
uh, clients are doing very, very well with, with our commercial agents. So that we're always going to have doctors, we're always going to have dentists, we're always going to have veterinarians. So it's something to, to be aware of as well. Uh, we've got some other information and I, we're going to have links for you that we'll have at the end of this too. Let me see what my timing is like. Oh, I'm doing good. Okay, next slide, please, Tris. Target marketing. Oh, this is so target, target, target. Don't just throw it against the wall. Make sure that what you're going after is going to be valuable. It's something that you need. Uh, identify your key audiences. Who are your prospects? Who is your target client? Who is your perfect client? What do they look like? And that's who you need to go after. Uh, whether it's a listing, uh, off-market property, whatever it is that is your your target, make sure that you're going after that particular audience and don't get distracted. Um, create and have telling stories around the type of product that's been successful for you or that you've seen in the market that people are looking for. Telling stories around it is much better than even, you can give statistics. Uh, people aren't, they, they'll remember some numbers. Most of the time they'll remember percentages. If you use percentages, um, they'll remember those. If uh, you're using, you know, stats in general, they're not going to remember that as well. But if you can tell a compelling story, something you've been successful with, something that happened and challenges that you were uh, that you were able to meet as a broker and things that happened that were success stories, you know, always show that there was a problem to be solved and that you solved it. So that really resonates with your with your audience and with your prospects, whether they come to you that day or later on, they will recognize the fact that you have provided valuable information. What I hear over and over from my clients and my agents that that I'm working with is that they need to provide value. I need to provide value when I make these calls. This is going to be one of those things that you can use as providing value, having those stories behind how you solve problems whatever their problem is, first you have to find that out. So we'll, we'll look at that in a minute too. Design uh, visual assets, having something that is going to be engaging for your clients when you send them an email, anything that comes through, uh, you know, and in, in marketing information and all that. We have so many tools available to us today between the AI, between the tech, between the marketing, between the things that are going on at KW Commercial with Circle, our resources, all of those things. Take advantage of all of these so that you have something that's visually attractive for them to draw their attention to it. Next slide, please, Tris. Tech. Oh, yeah, this is it. Uh, <laughs> We have been lackadaisical about this, folks, in commercial real estate. Not everybody, but some of us have been. Some of us, like me, I was behind the times until I had to catch up and uh, make sure that, uh, you know, that I was doing what we needed to be doing. The technology that we have today is just exploding. Our jobs are not going to be replaced by technology. Our VA, our, our administrators are not going to be replaced by technology. What is going to happen is that we could be replaced by people that know the technology and that can use the technology. And our, our support staff and the people that work with us and the agents that we have with us need to be tech savvy because if you're not, you'll get left behind because this next year is going to be huge as far as technology is concerned. I am not a wizard at this, but I have learned so much with AI and through social media, and I use a lot of LinkedIn information as well. Or I use LinkedIn quite a bit. The social uh, connections on social media are important. Um, LinkedIn primarily is what I use. I use some Facebook because we've had the KW Commercial Official Forum. We've used that. Now we've got Circle. We'll talk about connections and networking and communications. If you're not into Circle, you need to email me or email, not me, email admin at kwcommercial.com, admin at kwcommercial.com and ask for your access to Circle. They will give you the information and the link that you need to get on here. We have our schedules, our trainings, we have our documents, we have uh, marketing information, we have all the tools and resources, all the training for Real Next, all the training for Nucleus, all those things are on Circle. You need to be able to be there. This is also the communication source that we have for KW Commercial. It's the newest uh, platform that we have, and it contains everything. It's KW Commercial. You need to be there. Leverage tech. 
um, doing your market analysis, use your AI for uh, you know dealing with kind of marketing information and creating better marketing information, writing your emails, creating uh, you know attractive ways to uh, bring your clients to you uh, through different types of uh, advertise or marketing tools and information client management there's all kinds of technology that's out there for client management i have some tips and tools for you that and a link and that's coming momentarily um thank you karen uh, she put the kwcommunities.circle.com if you go to this particular one you have to log in when you log in it'll say give it a password if you don't have your password click forgot password and they will send you an email for you to reset a password and then you can get into to circle so go for that. Um, uh, let's see what we have here. Client management, transaction deal flow. I have a, 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 some information for you on that in a link here shortly, I'll show you. Current and future technological trends. Uh, all AI tools for predictive analysis. If you can you know, get into this AI, it gives you great ways to be able to predict what's going to be going on. They analyze, they can do performance. They do all sorts of, uh, financial uh, analysis. They can do marketing analysis. It and there are probably there's there's hundreds of ways now to use the AI. So get involved, figure it out, start slow, and build up your your uh, your skill sets in this. And economic and market forecast. You can get on and do some a lot of forecasting that you can see what's going on in your area and the trend too. Next slide, please, Tris. Service excellence, we all know what this means. It's so important for us to get referrals and to have our, our clients come back to this. Our sphere of influence is where you should be focusing right now. Uh, personalized services, focus on your client needs and their uh, particular preferences. How do you problem solve for them? You don't have to sell yourself. You have to show them that you can solve their problems, but you have to know what they are so you need to be able to be, you know, inquisitive and, and go into each of your, your, your calls or your prospective areas and, you know, with, with um, you know, with interest in what their needs are and what their preferences are. <clears throat> Excuse me, proactive support. You'll see proactive here and you'll see proactive in communications. That means you're not responding, you're not reacting, that you are being proactive. That means you don't if you're responding to something, you're probably going to be distracted. If you're being proactive and setting up how you're going to support your clients, how you're going to be able to, to um, you know, support your, um, your, your prospective clients, then you're going to be much more productive if you're proactive and in proactive communications. There was uh, set standards and boundaries to protect yourself and protect your time. I am adamant about this. There's a lot to be doing. You know, we talk about time management. How do we manage our time? What's going on? We only have so many time, so much time in the day. You need to protect your time. A way I've found that it's been effective for, for the agents that I've worked with is you set your standards and your boundaries with your clients and you set some timelines when you can be for yourself. The boundaries are you make outgoing calls during a certain period of time you don't take incoming calls. You go, oh God, I could never do that. You need to do that. It's something that you need to be thinking about. You can do it in segments of 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes at a time, and but only do outgoing calls to do your lead generation or do your contacts going outgoing and don't take incoming calls. They'll distract you. Next slide, please, Tris. Okay, legal. We got law. And we got the right way to do things. We got legal and ethical considerations. It's one versus the other, or is it two of them together? So sometimes we can do things that are legal, but they may not be ethical. So I think one of the things that's absolutely wonderful about KW Commercial, of course, there's always exceptions, but our main culture is that we are ethical, that we take care of each other, and that we do things in a professional manager, uh, manage, uh, professional manner. So it's not the fact that we are um, 
you know, we're, we're great brokers and we do things that are correctly, but we're also ethical and we're paying attention to what our ethics are and how we're seen as professional with others, not only inside KW Commercial, but outside as well. Next slide, please, Tris. One thought on that past one, we don't have to go back, but one thought on that past one, always have a couple of attorneys that you work with that can provide pro bono information to you with the reciprocity of you providing them the opportunity to get in front of your clients. So um, make sure that that is part of your professional network and your setup. Marketing and sales techniques, effective marketing strategies, commercial properties, digital marketing and social media presence and sales techniques that close. We've got these documents for you. So I'm gonna show you that in just a second. Next slide, please, Tris. Maintain your meaningful relationships. Relationships are everything. Almost every client or agent that I'm talking to that is being successful right now, they say, I say, where are your deals coming from? From past clients. Where are your deals coming from? From my sphere of influence. So I believe in cold calling. I believe in targeted cold calling. And, uh, but I also believe that right today, now, in 2024, the best way to your deal is through your sphere of influence. Even if you're new to the industry, you've got a sphere of influence. And if you don't have that sphere of influence with other professionals or past clients, you need to build it with other professionals. Um, nurture the loyalty of the clients. You know, repeat business that, and referrals. That's where a lot of the success is coming from, and from 23 and 24. Um, customize your offerings to each of the clients. Make sure that you're meeting their needs and they're hitting their priorities. They're, a lot of times that, uh, you know, agents will just, you know, throw something at a client or a prospect and say, yes, we can do this, or yes, this is the, you know, this is the price, or yes, we can list this property. And they're not really identifying what those particular needs or, or uniqueness is to that client. So make sure that you do. These may sound foundational, and they are. But that is also the way that 2024 is going to be successful for you. We've got to go back to the foundation of why we're doing this business and how it's done effectively and professionally. There are always ways that we can make ourselves better, but it's always our skill sets that we need to improve. This is one thing I think is really important. You teach people how to treat you. If your clients are bugging you 10, 15 times a day or you're allowing them to bug you, you're teaching them how to treat you. If you have smaller client or smaller opportunities and transactions and they're taking a lot of your time, that's generally the case. Because the smaller the transaction, the less experienced the prospect or client will be. So the more time it's going to take in handholding. That's why I say quality versus quantity. Do your very best to raise your quality of your deals and transactions and you will see your GCI excel. Uh, focusing on smaller group of quality clients. Take 50 of your sphere of influence and focus on them. Those are your, those are your A clients. Make sure that you get 50, at least 50 of your A prospect at sphere of influence that you're going to be communicating with on a regular basis. Next slide, please, Tris. Personal develop and networking, continuing education, We've got so much in KW Commercial. Don't miss out. It's in circle. Build a strong professional network. Attorneys, bankers, lenders, engineers, architects, planners, community, city, uh, government officials. All of those are uh, you know, general contractors and so forth. All of those are so important to what you're going to be doing. Is, is your screen bouncing around, folks, or is it just mine? My screen is bouncing. All right, next slide, please, Tris. Just yours. Okay, good. That's wonderful. When I first saw this YI4C2TS, I thought, boy, this is so residential. I mean, I was one of those snobs. I was one of those commercial real estate broker snobs. Okay, I'd been with you know, the major companies and I'd had my own firm and I was like, oh yeah, I don't. Look at this. This is all about doing business. This has nothing to do with residential or commercial. Win, win or no deal. How many times do we do that every day? Integrity, do the right thing. Customers always come first. Clients always come first. Commitment in all things. Communication, seek first to understand. Go into it with inquisition. Find out. Curiosity. 
creativity, ideas before results, teamwork, everybody achieves more together. Trust starts with honesty. Be honest with your clients up front. Go ugly early. Let them know what the deal is. Let them know what's going on. Uh, success, results through people. Leverage, leverage, leverage. Communication and networking. Use this. You'll have these slides too. Tris, next slide. We've been talking a lot about sales. This is also on the leasing side now. Relationships, drive your deals and your business growth through relationships. Service, exceptional service. Um, and I just lost my screen. Hang on one second. I'm going to pull this up. Exceptional service. Um, and then we have uh, create information, leasing, and investment decisions. Leverage your market data and analytics. Attract ideal clients in your marketing. And their properties maximize values. Next slide, please, Tris. Focus on areas for quality. Identify key client groups and understand their needs. Gather insights through surveys, um, listings, transactions, strategies. Next slide, please, Tris. We're going to run through these real quick because I want to show you where the, where the information is that I'm going to be sending you. Uh, align listings with expertise. Ne next one, Chris. Go to the quick, go past the QA, and then we're going to stop at the, okay. Commercial transactions, management information. You're going to be getting this in, uh, take this link. You can copy it down. Uh, we're also going to put it into the chat box for you market analysis and, and uh, data resources, strategy, sales techniques, and commercial real estate deals. These are one pagers that have a lot of tips and things in it for you. Why are we doing this today? This is for the new people that are coming into KW Commercial, which is exciting. We're growing like crazy. And it's also for, you know, the seasoned uh, agents that are here. We've got some great resources. One of the resources that we have is this KW, uh, our commercial shift book. And that's where this information is coming from. Um, next slide, please, Tris. I'm going to take a moment here and mark it. Okay, this is the commercial mentorship program that I uh, that I host. This is the fifth season and series that we have been doing this. It is outstanding. It is a five month program. Um, one of my uh, unique uh, clients that has been very successful and attendees to our CMP and graduate is Wendy Excel. Uh, Wendy, would you come on for the screen for a minute, please? And Miles, if you'd put her up so that everybody can see her. She has been very successful in using a lot of the CMP uh, commercial mentorship program tools and resources. And Wendy, I'd love to hear some of your, your success stories and what's been happening with you since you graduated from CMP. Sure, um, so thanks for having me so much. And I really do, one of the things I love about Dale, you guys, if you get to work with her, is that she really is dedicated uh, to your individual success. And she gives you her cell phone number and says, you know, I'm your coach. Text me if you need to. Email me if you need to. And I certainly have taken advantage of that. And I have made big strides because of it. Um, one thing you may be wondering at listening, you know, being in this 30 minute um, program is, okay, so you've just told me all the things I need to do, but how in the world do I do that? And then the um, com commercial mentorship program, Dale really gets granular and teaches you exactly how to do each thing, or at least tells you how you should do them. Um, and so there is, uh, she goes through everything from your GPS and your 411 to what um, publications you should tap into in order to really understand what's going on in your market center so that you can make the connections and you can know what you're talking about to potential clients. Um, in the course of <clears throat> learning from Dale in the commercial mentorship program, I um, went from really being a, turning around in circles, deer in headlights, not sure, which direction to head to really being purposeful in my activities. And I was able to secure a, um, uh, a business actually, a business listing that's in the nine figures. Um, there's another uh, 
there's a hotel and a, um, a multifamily um, opportunity that I just secured in the nine um, million dollar range. And then there's also a church services building that I just secured in the $3 million range. So my um, opportunities have increased and my understanding and knowing how to talk to these people to actually land these deals has really been developed because of this commercial mentorship program. So how long, if how you're long, wondering, oh, go ahead. If you're wondering if you should do it, I would recommend it. <laughs> That's why I'm <laughs> well, here because you. I've seen success from it. Whitney, how long have you been in the industry now? So I started uh, just four and a half years ago in Keller Williams, and I started in residential. And I was a business owner before I was in real estate, and I sold my business. And so my path organically moved from residential into commercial. Those were the people I was talking to day to day, business owners and people with commercial properties that they either wanted to list or buy. And so I kind of naturally moved into that space um, of doing commercial and business brokerage. Where are you? What city are you in? What state? I'm in Charleston, South Carolina. Oh, aren't they lucky? <laughs> <laughs> <That's nice. laughs> well, thank you, Wendy. I certainly appreciate it. And uh, I want to respect everybody's time. We've taken uh, a little bit more time, but I've gone through a lot of information. And um, Trish, share the last slide, please. And as Wendy said, I am available for you. This is my phone number. I would ask that you text me first as I am very, very busy on the phone and Zooming a lot with my clients. So, but I will respond to this um, and make sure that you can either email me or text me and I will respond to you. And uh, I look forward to working with all of you. If there's any way that I can help you in coaching either through Fast Track, which is the group. Uh, and that one starts uh, February 14th, just before family reunion. And then uh, I also coach one-on-one -on -one in Breakthrough, which is every two weeks, and Mastery, which is once a week. So I look forward to speaking to all of you. If you have any questions about any of this or any of the documents that are here in the links or anything that we've talked about today, um, please let me know, text me or email me, and I'll be glad to respond. If you'd like to stay on for questions, I'll be glad to do that. Uh, and, but if you need to go into your business day, I understand that as well. So thank you for joining us. But if there's any questions, I'll take them now. Well, I look forward to working with any and all of you. So if you have any ways that I can help you, please let me know. Uh, again, reach out to me at my phone or at my email. I look forward. Many, did you have a question? I see your hand up. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for taking my um my hand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was just listening to Wendy. Very good information. But I just wanted to know, is a person able to do both commercial and residential? Uh, of course you can, but I it's not recommended because mm -hmm. there's such different uh directions and mindsets that mm -hmm. if you're having to move from one situation to another or one kind of real estate to another, it's, it's challenging to do that. There are different tactics, there are different mindsets, there are different documents, there are different approaches, different clients, different, you know, every, everything's a little bit different. So um, that makes sense. if you, you know, it's like going to, if you have- uh, That makes sense, I understand. If different you have a heart issue- Paperwork and all that. Right, if you have a heart issue, you don't go to uh, a brain doctor. You know, they're both doctors, but <laughs> they have specialties. So that's why- So, we, so yeah. in other words, in the situation, if I wanted to just get into something different, I could probably um, ease into it. And if I do get a residential, just refer it out get paid for the referral fee and, and just move on with the commercial. Yes. Well, you need mm -hmm. probably six to nine months of money in the bank to, to carry yourself through the first six to nine months in commercial. It usually takes mm -hmm. that long for you to get paid. Interesting. So, okay. So you need to be able to save up for it and be able to afford it for your personal and your business expenses. So six to six to nine months of money, we say put a reserve in the bank to carry, carry yourself personally and for expenses to, to get into commercial real estate. It's more expensive than residential. Mm -hmm.
And how long have you been doing commercial, Miss Dale? <laughs> Over 30 years. I was wow. In, Congratulations. Been, thank you. Yes. I did land for about the first, I was focused primarily on land and development for about the first 15 to 17 years of my career. And then I moved to mm -hmm. Orlando in central Florida and I became more diversified and uh, went into more retail industrial representing clients and, and, um, and tenants and buyers. Oh, okay. So I've got Thank a little bit of background in, in all of it. I've had my own firm. I've also worked with the, in the corporate structure with um, Colliers and also with NAI Real Best as a corporate, as a corporate puppy. So KW Commercial is the best combination of corporate support and entrepreneurial oh. spirit I've seen in the nation. Thank you for the information. You're welcome. Let's see if there's anything else in the chat here. You're welcome. You're welcome. What's the price of the commercial mentorship program? $199 a month. Thank you for asking, Karen. <laughs> Very important question. Yeah. Yeah. But it's $199 a month and it's every week and we do 90 minutes every week. There's a workbook. There are um, uh, replays, videos, replays so that you, if you miss something, you can always come back and get it. And then we have PowerPoint presentations similar to this. Thank you. Uh, 109 for five months, okay? Uh, and it's, you pay on a monthly basis. So it's very reasonable. So if you're looking at it, it's probably $50 a, a week. I mean, $50, yeah, $50 a week for you to get this kind of training. So and it's, it's quite remarkable. It's not just me. I have other professionals that are on. We have lenders. We have attorneys. We have... Uh, economics we have all of the people that are in the professional world that, that come on and give you their side of the story so it's not just me as a talking head you have other pros that are that are working with us thank okay. you dale You're welcome any other questions price of the commercial i'm already registered on the mentorship program thank you sam i saw your name there sam great uh very interesting i hope it's been helpful to you i know i sped through this real quick but I only had a short period of time. So um, I really appreciate everybody being here. I am always open for questions. So let me know how I can help you grow in your business. One more thought. I've had my clients, my MAPS clients and my commercial mentorship program uh, attendees and graduates sometimes double and triple their income because they looked at quality versus quantity. And we get very deeply into that, into the commercial mentorship program. So I look forward to seeing any of you there and talk to you soon and have a fantastic rest of the week and weekend and see you soon. Bye now. Bye. Thank